Hey everybody, Barry here again. If you're watching from central Newfoundland, welcome to lockdown number three of two weeks to flatten the curve. Probably a bad joke, actually. Anyway, so uh, I just want to start this off by saying anybody who shops at CarQuest in central here in Lewisport, we are shut down to the public, but we're still doing over the phone orders and, you know, uh, curbside drop off, that kind of thing. So if you need any parts, we're not closed, just come see us. Today, I'm going to get at something, 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 something. I'm not exactly sure what. I came up here without much of a plan, but I got a lot to do, so I'll just pick something from the big long list and go, I'll do that. And I think I'm probably going to get at the oil lines for the oil filter and maybe come up with some idea for a dipstick, whether I use the original dipstick location and use a really, really short stick or um, use the drain for the turbo because there's a big long drain right in front of the oil pan that I could stick a rod down through, have it marked off at six, seven quarts, whatever, and um, just use that. But that would involve me having to undo the drain every time I want to check the oil, which is not serious because every time I blow up an engine, I put new oil in it anyway. And that's like three times a year, so it gets regular oil changes. So let's uh, pull some of this stuff off right here. Probably pull the turbo off, get this whole front accessory drive off because I do have to clean up and paint all that anyway, so it's got to come back off. I just wanted to do a mock-up so I could cut my hoses to the right lengths and stuff like that. So, we got lots to do. Let's get at it. Well, all that stuff is taken out of the way. And I actually have a plan for the oil dipstick tube, which didn't require me to do any of that. Of course. But, of course, this here is a Chev truck dipstick tube. It goes really, really low for the oil level in the rear sump pans. And we can see that the hole is right here for the dipstick. And I've got about two and a half inches or so. It's hard to see with the camera here, but two and a half inches or so of oil pan. And with six quarts of oil, my oil actually came a little bit above this here, so up around this range here. So with the dipstick tube in the block, it comes down here and the pan is about an inch and a half lower than the exit of the tube here. So if I cut off this dipstick to the right height, then I can put it down in the block and pour oil in it. And I think I'm going to probably do seven quarts mainly because I've got a remote mount oil filter, so that's gonna add two, probably two foot long half inch hoses, and then the line going up to the turbo. So I'm probably gonna want an extra quart oil in there anyway. And I'll do that, put my dipstick in, mark where the oil sits, and then cut off about a half inch lower than I just saw, know where the add line is, that kind of thing. I, it's not perfect, but it'll work perfectly fine as long as I keep checking on the oil and I don't have any leaks and stuff. So. There's a lot of extra work, but at least now I can get in there and see where everything needs to be because with the turbo and the manifold, bumpers and all that stuff there, I couldn't see a thing. Also, my girls have been here recently. <laughs> so I refuse to wipe that off. As long as the van is dusty, let's stay in there. I don't even want to wash it, actually. It's really cute. So I'm going to go ahead and put my dipstick tube down into the block. I can find this one handed. Get in there. There you go. All right, so that's in. Now let's see where the dipstick has to go. Well, this one's not going to go in one handed, but I uh, got it. So it's not bad. It touches the pan with about an inch and a half or so left. So I'll cut a little bit off of it just to make sure that when the dipstick hits the pan, it doesn't just kind of deflect off like that and get a wrong oil reading. My tape's too messed up up here to read, so. <laughs> it's, uh, I'll cut two inches off anyway. I'm gonna move some of this turbo stuff out of the way. That is the turbo that's gonna be on the rat rod. I was just kind of servicing it, cleaning it up, that kind of thing, making sure everything is all good. It's, it's decently clean, actually. These are all the bolts here that I had problems with and twisted off three or four. But this thing's in wicked shape. I haven't even cleaned that. I can't wait to get back at the rat rod. The second that the van is done and on the road, 
I'm getting back at the rat ride because I miss driving it. I miss all the crazy looks I get uh, when I'm just being a nuisance around town. People love it or people hate it. It's sort of a 50-50 thing, but you know, I can't wait. So let's get this thing done so I can get the rat ride on the go. Actually, before I go any farther, I have to say that I've seen a few comments now where I check in my notifications on Studio app and the comment is there. I can read some of it, but when I click on it, it says comments not found. So if I don't reply to you, I'm not being an idiot. I cannot click into your comment. And sometimes I try to tag people and, you know, say, hey, I can't see your comment and stuff. But if it doesn't come up and I check in, uh, I check in held for review and only a couple come up there. So I don't know if it's like profanity thing. Like, like if you swear in a comment, will it get deleted or what? I, I clicked that my videos are not for kids. So I, I wouldn't think that would be the case, but... Yeah, if I don't reply, maybe try commenting again. I check every notification like every morning. I only have like three or four comments a day kind of thing. So I'm not like obviously flooded or anything. And thanks for commenting. It's really cool. It's nice to see when somebody goes, hey man, I like your videos or whatever. Obviously I'm not asking for comments or likes, but you know, it's cool. This could absolutely be done better, but I think it's gonna work perfect just as it is. So I'll cut it right at this dimple right here because that's right on the two inch mark. Give me a good solid line to cut on. And now, this should be pretty much flush with the bottom of the pan, and it sticks out quite a lot, you can see here. Almost two inches, actually, that it sticks out. Yeah, pretty much two inches. So, if I can get the oil up about this far, say an inch up the stick, I'll know then if it's a little bit low or not. And when I find the oil level, all I have to do is take my hacksaw and just make a little score across here. This stuff's really easy to scratch because it's got like a coating on it. And that'll be my oil level from here on out. Something else I have to do before I put the intercooler and all that back in is notch the frame rail. Only on this side because the port on the driver's side is actually a little bit lower than the passenger side. So I've just got to kind of cut it across here a little bit. Maybe bash it in or maybe just cut it out and leave it out altogether. And that'll give me room to slip my hose on. I only need probably a half an inch, just enough to slip the hose on over the outlet on the intercooler and put a clamp on it. Let's put this thing in. Where to? Where are we? Here we are. Sick. Oh, I think I'll put a bolt in that after. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work perfect. Good stuff. Now that I got that done, I'm going to go ahead and mount my oil filter, which is pretty exciting. Now, I was just doing some reading, and it'd be easier for me to put the filter with the canister up. All right, so here's the filter relocation kit. For anybody who hasn't seen this before, it's Transdap number 1028. We get these through Keystone, and they're inexpensive. And they're awesome. They're billet aluminum. So I was just doing some reading on a couple forums and I can actually run my filter like this straight up, which apparently could make a mess. I can see that because it holds like probably half a quart of oil. But somebody said, spin the filter off just until it cracks the seal. That'll allow air to get in and the oil will actually run right back down into the pan. Give it a minute or so and then unscrew the filter. No mess. Screw a new filter on and done. The only... A downside to doing it this way is I can't fill the filter up before I screw it on. I always like to do that just so the filter is full when you go to start the vehicle again so there's no air getting at the top end before oil gets there. 
Lots of vehicles are like that. I know F-150 filters or maybe some RAM filters go in sideways and screw in this way. You can't fill those up either. So I'm sure it's no real big harm. The main reason I want to do it like that is for space constraints for sure. For one, I can screw it on just like this. And I don't want to use these 90s. I'm sure they'd work okay, but they're pecs. So they're half inch outside diameter here, but they're smaller on the inside. And my hose is kind of sloppy on them. So it won't be like a pushover seal and then clamped. It'll, they'll, you'll be able to pull them right off with no issues at all. So there's no force holding them on besides the clamps. Now on my block, I've got straight barbs, which are really nice. So I think I'll take these off, fire them in the chest for further use and get some straight ones. That would allow me to put my filter here like this. The lines would come down straight out of it. Go down here under this manifold behind the rack and all that and right up into the pan. I also found out that there, of course, there's two ports on my pan right now because there's no oil filter on it. So the two ports that are coming out of it, the front port goes in on the inside of the filter, which you can see right here. So the front port on the pan would come into here and then this one comes back out and will go into the back port on the pan. Easy, it's not serious at all. So I'll do that and then uh, tee off of that somewhere, you know, somewhere halfway in between and put the uh, line for my turbo into it. Another option for the turbo oil feed is the port right at the front of the block off the oil pump. A lot of people use it, some people don't. Apparently it's not filtered oil. But as for this thing, it's whistle clean inside. I don't expect it to get real dirty. And I don't drive it anywhere there's dust, no dirt roads, not in the winter. So I don't expect the oil to get dirtied up too much anyway. So that's the port that's right down here. I'll pull out the plug, see what the thread is. I may have to get a thread adapter, but if I do, I'll get one that fits this oil line here. This is one that I had made up. It's, I think it's dash six maybe maybe dash four but i'll get one that goes to this uh, this is actually half inch propane for whatever reason because it fits the top of my turbo and i'll see what i can get made up for that well here's the plug that came out of the block and i've got lots of these so i don't care if i ruin it or not but i'm going to see if i can tap this to the quarter in pt so i'll just drill this straight through drill it big enough and tap that one directly in there and this one is kind of weird because this is like a, the half inch propane or whatever and that screws in right here so then i'll have my uh, fitting and it'll work perfect i'm going to go ahead and take off all the accessory drive now that i got the uh, oil dipstick tube done and get that stuff all cleaned up and painted because it'll be kind of nice to see all of this black and not rusty and gross let's go ahead and take it off and see if i can get it as nice looking as the intake So I got a few things cleaned up, and while I was looking at the alternator here, I noticed that it has a different plug-in than mine. Mine being a Gen 3, uh, I think it's a 105 amp alternator, and it's got the wide plug-in with three or four wires. I think it's four, but anyway. And this one here has the narrow plug-in with two wires. I think that has a lot to do with it being a 145 amp alternator. So I'm going to go home and pull that off the rat rod, and I might as well pull the power steering pump and that assembly off of the rat rod also because that one's pretty rusty and i don't know if the pump worked or not 
and I know the rat rod stuff, I know the alternator's fine, I know the pump is fine, so I won't be having any issues with that. So I'll run home and take that off and be right back. Well, I'm back after realizing when I got home that the alternator and the power steering bracket are actually here. Because that's the one that I cut up uh, when I made the alternator relocation kit and all that. That's all here in the shop. Uh, not really a waste of time. Because I did find a throttle cable bracket, which I thought I didn't have. Little bolt on there. Deadly. I needed it. Thought I didn't have it. I grabbed some pizza. A couple more things I found when I was home. Old cutoff wheels. They'll work perfect. And my favorite pair of ice grips in the world. Nice wide jaw ones. So, not a total loss. Just a half hour out of the way. Uh, and uh, where is the alternator anyway? Oh, here it is. Yeah, there we go. That's the plug-in I was talking about. And it's already painted black, so I'll just go and give it another skim. I am going to have to use this bracket and power steering pump mainly because I cut the other one directly in half and it won't work for it anymore. So let's clean it up and paint it, see how it goes. But if anybody needs a 140 amp alternator out of an 08 or 09 van, hit me up. All right, this video's gone in like 10 different directions, but I have half a plan. I'm going to paint all this stuff here, including the alternator. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I think I'll notch the frame. I'll just notch that piece out, probably bring it up here six or seven inches just to make sure I got enough room for the hose to turn, all that stuff. And I'll go ahead and mount my oil filter. Maybe run the oil lines. I can't find my half inch or my quarter pipe tap, so I won't be able to tap the thing for the oil feed line today. And I don't have the 3.8 barb, sorry, the 3.8 NPT to half inch barb things today, but I can still go ahead and mount the oil filter. They'll still be able to mount that. I cleaned up the manifolds. I know paint's not going to stick to them very long after they get hot, but it'll look a lot nicer in the videos, and it'll look cool for, well, like 20 minutes until the manifolds get hot and burn the paint off. But they're in good shape for old used manifolds. So they'll work, uh, they'll work perfect. Hopefully they're not warped up too much. Looks fairly straight. Let's paint everything black. I'm really excited about how clean this water pump is and how well it cleaned up. It's in really good shape. Hopefully it doesn't leak. Barbecue paint for the win. Woo, got some parts painted. More junk over here painted. Manifolds came out awesome. Water pump came out nice. Power steam brackets and all that. The can of high build fleet coating that I was using last week on the intake. For some reason, I don't know if it separated in the can or something, but it was coming out just like water. And it was kind of odd. So shook it some more and still. So I had another can there and sprayed that on there and it came out wicked. Even the alternator came out good. All this stuff I gotta do. Maybe another coat on this, but. And also I went ahead and did this one. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and cut that frame where I need to, and then potentially then go ahead and mount the oil filter. It's getting really, really close to being ready to start. Now, it doesn't look like it right now, but when I get the engine stuff all done and get this oil system done, it's only just bolt the stuff together, do a little bit of wiring and fire it up in the van. That is my next big, big checkpoint, and I cannot wait to get it fired in the van. So let's go ahead and cut some stuff up, mainly this thing. Well, I was gonna do work while I was waiting for the paint to dry, but instead I ate two day old pizza and watched Average Joe Builds first drive of the twin turbo S10. I've been watching this guy for like quite a while now, 
and she's got like the coolest S10 on the planet. It's twin turbo, does nasty burnouts, and here's his channel. This guy's doing awesome. It's a wicked, wicked truck. And he just bought a Fairmont and blew up the engine like right away. So it reminds me of me, just the Canadian version of average Joe builds. So I'm going to tag his channel in the description because it's, it's deadly. There's a lot of really cool stuff. And uh, keep it up, man. Awesome job. So let's get back to this garbage. I'm going to flip those manifolds over, flip all this stuff over, and repaint it. Well, I'll just, you know, paint the other side of it. And then while I'm waiting for that paint to dry, because I'm full of pizza, I am going to go ahead and cut the frame rails out. Okay, now I'm gonna cut the frame because I know I said it again that after I'm done painting this stuff, waiting for it to dry, I'll do that. But then I found more to paint. I get in my own head. Next thing, this whole van will be black. We're not gonna go that far. Oh, my arm's ready to fall off. Dude, that is tough. Let's see if I can get this around here any sense. Oh, got a gap. Not a big gap, but... So instead of chopping the whole thing out, I thought I might make slits in it in a couple of locations. So like here, 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 so I could bend down a two inch tab rather than the whole unit, because this is thick. And then after I can just kind of buzz that shut with the welder and I can uh, beat in this piece here down and taper in and weld in there. So I'm going to give it a few more smacks to get it way out of the way for the rubber hose because that's probably 316 thick so I'll need a half inch for sure. So I'll smack some of that more some more of that out. Weld it up. And I might actually get something done tonight. I've had a couple people mention to me, you know, asking about t-shirts and stuff, and I hadn't really thought about it that much. But if I do, the first one is going to read, it ain't pretty, but it's going to work. And it's going to describe this perfectly. I got lots of room now. Everything's good. Uh, I have no idea what I'm going to do. I think I might mount the oil filter because everything here is still wet. This turned out deadly. I mean, it looks like I didn't even make it, which is like a bonus. I'm going to flip it over one more time, give it another coat of paint. It's like $5 a can barbecue paint, so how long is it going to last? Not very, but it'll look awesome until it does. And I'm going to wrap whatever I can here in header wrap anyway. So it's uh, maybe it'll create a barrier, a barrier between 
the header wrap and this stuff and we'll stop it from rusting, whatever. See where this uh, oil filter is gonna go, eh? I don't know if it's gonna work or not right away, but dude, you cannot beat that placement. I just gotta widen out these bolt holes or maybe drill another hole in it so they line up here and that'll go smack right on there. Perfect. I think it won't be too close to the manifold because that's sort of over here. Sorry, lens was dirty. Um, I think it'll bolt on perfect there. Lots of room where the manifold is. All kinds of room to get my lines on. And even if I got to do it like this, just to make the lines come down here on a better angle, I don't mind that. I'll be able to sneak in around the rack here and get away from all that stuff. Get away from the tie rods and that. Nope. I think that'll work perfect. Well, I drilled the holes out bigger and moved one over here in between these two so that the oil filter won't sit up straight. It'll sit on an angle toward the rack. That way, my oil lines will fit a lot better. Everything there fits really well. I was kind of nervous that the bolts wouldn't fit by this brace thing here and up there, but that fit perfect. And I haven't tried this yet, so I'm kind of nervous. But the worst you can do is not fit. And then I just do it again. Ooh, something. Let's see, let's see. I should have used thread chaser on these holes first. I think I'll do that. And by thread chaser, I mean ramming in with an impact. I love this stuff. This is amazing. Okay, let's try it again. Really exciting. See how cool it looks. <laughs> that is mint. Easiest oil change ever. It's gonna be so easy to change the oil on that. God. And I guess with it on this angle, all I gotta do is just spin it off a little bit, wait for oil to run down here into a bucket. And spin it off and we're done. Now the lines will come down here, go along behind the steering shaft back here. It's kind of dark, but up into the pan. This is so sick. That's something that I've been thinking about for a little bit is where to put the filter. And in two factory holes, I can't think of a better place. If I didn't do that, I was thinking about using like big self-tapping screws, which is just dumb. And it looks ghetto. But... That's sick. All right, frame rail, check. Just gotta find the nearest can of red paint and spray some of that stuff on so it doesn't rust. Oil filter relocation, half check. What else we got? A bunch of parts painted, deadly. I even went at the turbo again. Now that I look at it, I should have painted the drain also, but I'll do that tomorrow, whatever. Uh, water pump. Compressor housing is all painted. This thing, man, that's a lot done today. Oh, I'm the welder. That's a lot of stuff done today. This, this, this is awesome. I'm really excited because it's getting really, really close to firing. Oh, dipstick tube too. 
which fell down. But that's that's on there too. Sick. Tomorrow I'll get the rest of the pieces I need to do the um, oil filter, you know, the hoses and the fittings and all that stuff, and the turbo feed. Now that I have the turbo drained on, and like I said, the second that this thing is ready to fire, it's getting fired because all I need to do now is the oil side, which is just a couple of hoses. Uh, what else? Stab some wiring on it, plug some connectors in, get a battery on it, fuel system. I'll put a, a fuel pump in a can again. Same thing as I did on the engine stand a little while ago, just to get it running and make it go boom. God, and it, it'll be putting exhaust through the turbo now too, so it'll be extra crazy loud. I'm not even putting any exhaust on it yet. It's gonna be straight out the back of the turbo, which is a five inch hole. It's gonna be something. So stick around, everybody. Thanks for watching again. Subscribe if you haven't, just to, you know, keep up on this madness over here and watch me make just as many mistakes as I do successes. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good night, everybody.